As an actor, I am fascinated with stories. It's amazing that something like this still exists. And Singapore is a perfect source for this. Whoa! What surprises does it hide? Or mysteries to answer? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Join me, Adrian, as I go on a journey to explore and unravel Singapore's secrets. Here on History Mysteries. You know, I very often hear fellow Singaporeans griping about how boring Singapore is, how everything's so touristy, how all our attractions are so fake, and that there's nothing new to explore anymore. Well, I think that there are still hidden gems to be found, but only if you're willing to take the road less traveled. Tiong Bahru has come a long way from its humble roots. Now a home to hipster cafes and indie boutiques, Tiong Bahru has upped its cool factor tremendously. In 1939, it was debated that shelters should be built around population centres such as Chinatown. But the governor at the time, Sir Shenton Thomas, argued that it was impractical as the risk of enemy bombers getting through Singapore's defences were low. After much pressure from the public, an air raid shelter was finally built in Tiong Bahru. And I'm here to meet Mei Hui, a volunteer at My Community, who leads 20 different heritage walks in Singapore, including the one for Tiong Bahru Air Raid Shelter. So Mei, we're right in the middle of Tiong Bahru, and it is amazing that we are standing outside an air raid shelter in the middle of this residential area. Can you tell me a little bit about this place? Where we are standing now is actually, this block is actually built in 1939, but it was actually supposed to be planned for playgrounds, motor oh. garages, but now it's been converted into an air raid shelter. So, how many people can this air raid shelter actually accommodate? We only can accommodate up to 1,600 people, and it's a size of 13 five-room HDB flats. Amazing! Were there many other air raid shelters all around Singapore? Uh, not that I know of, but this one remained intact right. and it's under the charge of uh, National Heritage Board now. Aha, uh -huh, so yeah. it's been well, well taken care. Yes. Can we take a look? Sure, why not? Fantastic, please. Hello. Welcome, Adrian, to the air raid shelter. Come, Whoa. let's take a look. Okay. And for a start, can you see the old and the new pipes? Uh huh. But uh, I'm going to show you a very interesting room. Right, Adrian, come, let's take a look at this Whoa. one of the rooms. Spacious. Yeah, and who do you think it's for? Well, take a look at this. What is it? What do you think ARP stands for? Oh, it was reserved yeah. for ARP yes, Wardens Air Families. Air Precaution Wardens. Air Raid families. Precaution Wardens. Oh, yes. not, not just the Wardens themselves, but yeah. their families, their as, families well. as well. Families as well. When the salary went off, they'll be here. And take a look, it's written in Chinese as well. Right. Wow, a bit stuffy in here, don't you think? Well, let me show you the air conditioning then. There's air conditioning? Oh, let's take Fantastic. a look. Fantastic, I'm buying it. Come, let's take a look. Where? Wow. Okay, oh, ooh. You feel cooler now? Um, I do, actually. Yeah, so just look up there, see what it is. Oh, 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 wow. Yeah, okay. that's the ventilation. Oh, I see, and then it goes all the way up to the roof, it yes. seems. I see. Okay, so this this cools down the place. Yes, that's uh, right. Provides uh, some ventilation, some air. Yeah, that's it. right. Very good thinking. So this is just like one room of many, is that correct? Yes, that's right. We are going to explore. Fantastic. Let's go this way. Lead the way. Ooh. And do you see something on the floor? Oh, okay, Not yeah, there's a little kind of indentation here. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, what what so is that? That's actually for the ladder because where you see is the trap door. There are four such trap doors, uh -huh. and when the siren went off, the people will actually come down here. Right, because strictly speaking, this is actually one level under the, the ground level, is that correct? Yes. All right, so yeah. that's upper, upper level. Yes, that's right. Uh huh. And once they are down, they'll come to this room where uh -huh. they will assemble. Whoa, so can you show me another room? Sure, why not? Okay, this way. way. Okay, Adrian, let's uh, take a look at these partitions which have been knocked down. Uh -huh. This could possibly be a kitchen because of this 
um, these things to hold the exhaust pipe. Oh, that? I see. Right? Okay, so yes. speculation that this it's might right. have been the, yes. the, the kitchen. Yes. And this little one, room, yeah. yeah, tiny room. It could have been for storage of food uh -huh. when you want to cook. All right, like a little kind of larder yes. or something for foodstuffs. For a pantry. Wow. Okay, then come this way. Uh huh. Right, Adrian, come this way. This is one of the sick bays. As you can see, there's a window in front. Ah, okay, so, so especially for ventilation for, yeah. for the sick bays. Yeah, that's right. I, I hope you enjoyed. I, I, I did. It was certainly very enlightening and uh, this is such an important part of our history and which contains still so many mysteries to be solved. Now, I'm really curious about these structures that were used during World War II as military facilities. Now, are there more such structures in Singapore? I think it's time for a little research. A defensive military fortification designed to protect people and materials from falling bombs or other attacks is not just known as an air raid shelter, it's also called a bunker. Bunkers are mostly built underground and used extensively in World War II for weapons and storage facilities and command and control centers. If I'm looking for hidden bunkers in Singapore that few are aware of, I'm going to need the help of someone who knows his way around our little island. And I think I've found just the guy. Meet Harry, an avid explorer of hidden places in Singapore. His passion for urban exploring started six years ago when he discovered his first hidden bunker. Wait, 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 wait. Mm. Harry, are you sure we've come to the right place? I mean, most people come to this area to go to Xiaim Hokkien Centre. Uh, are you sure we've come to the right place? Yep. If you want to know more, just follow me and you can see for yourself. Okay, let's go. Oh, my God. Okay, Adrian, here we are. The bunker. Whoa! And here it is, all of a sudden. Yep. It looks, it looks, um, it looks tiny. At least the entrance is is, is tiny. Is it is it a really small bunker? Uh, yes. So we only have one entrance. When was it discovered? Oh, it's discovered in 2005 <clears throat> by a blogger from One of Explorer. They are the veteran explorer in Singapore. Unfortunately, not a lot of this private bunker is known, as there were no records available. This bunker, right, very mysterious, even though it's a very small bunker. Uh -huh. And there are a lot of theories about the bunker. If you see about the bricks, right, mm -hmm. okay, it's, a, it's like a Spanish type of a architecture. But a lot of people say it's a World War II POW. No, no. It's not even a British, uh, even British bunker. Oh. Because usually British love to uh, usually put the date on every of their forts okay. or bunkers or their barracks. Uh -huh. So this is not, this is confirmed a private one. A private bunker? Yeah, a private bunker. Uh-huh, I see, but it's not very big. If you go inside, it's one, one metre. Further in, uh -huh. it's 2.5 metre tall. Oh, OK. So, yes. we, so can we go in? Yes, you OK? Uh, you ready? Yeah, let's do it. I think uh, yeah, a torchlight is a good idea. Oh, my goodness. This is it, is it? This is it. <laughs> yeah, it's quite... <laughs> It's a, it's, a, it's a lot smaller than I thought it would be. Wow. And the whole, the whole of it is, has got this um, kind of archway kind of feel to it. Yeah, uh, according to uh, the research, it's actually inspired by the Spanish architecture in the right. 1800s. Right. So, uh, oh, dating back to the 1800s? Yeah, 1800s, yes. Ah, okay. So, uh, when you see this metal, right, okay, uh -huh. one of the theory is actually the metal is got to do with these three holes. Some, right. some say it's a uh, filter, some say it's a pipe. Okay. So it support the pipes onto this generator. You know what, Harry? I never ever would have expected in a million years that there would be something like this, a bunker like this hidden in this uh, heavily vegetated part of Singapore that's right next to a car park, <laughs> just, just out there. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, Edwin, don't be surprised, Edwin. There are a lot of mysterious and hidden bunkers in the, uh, around Singapore. Uh -huh. So, uh, I can bring you one, uh -huh. which is at the north side. Okay. You can see more about the one in, in the inside the forest. Fantastic. Of the northern area. Let's go it. Let's go it. I'm now on my way to explore a hidden bunker at Marceling with my guide, Harry. 
It's not an easy trek, to say the least. We entered from Marceline Crescent into the jungle. There was no trail to follow, and without Harry, I would have been lost without a clue. And we finally reached the entrance after more than an hour. Okay. Okay, we oh, oh. found the bunker already. Really? What are you talking about? Yeah, lah. Because I tell you what, it's either bunker, right? Uh huh. Ah, there? Oh my god! What? Well, this is it? Yeah. You never seen before? Uh, no, not like this. <laughs> Well, honestly, this 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 looks nothing like what I imagined it to be. Oh, okay. So, what was it used for? The British actually uh, used from here to Sembawang as a never be stop. Uh huh. So, uh, inside, right? Uh huh. It's actually a pipe of fuels connected to, right now, a waterfront, because uh -huh. previously it's also a never dock. Uh -huh. So all the navies were actually parked there, right? right? So they were actually channel all the pipes to here. So, unfortunately, the place actually was disused. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's I, been used, disused since what? Uh, since uh, 1945. 1945, yeah, just yeah. after the war? Yeah, yeah. Right, Something so it's like just that. been sitting there like, yeah. like this? So, no, the thing is, actually, after like 1960 plus, like uh -huh. 1968, right? Uh-huh. So, the land was handed back to Singapore. Oh, okay. And then the shell company actually took over. Uh -huh. uh, that's why when you walk, right, you can uh -huh. see the shell uh, station, shell, uh, station on, at the back. I see. Yeah, after that, now, uh, it become abandoned, uh -huh. uh, become hidden. In 1993s, a uh, Marsling resident, he found uh -huh. it, and he become hidden bunker of Marsling. Uh -huh. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Yeah, 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 I'll be very, very slow. Slippery, yeah. So slowly. Yeah. Ooh. Yep. But, ooh. Ah, okay. Okay, this is nothing like what I expected, I have to say. Yep. Uh, these walls are Quite very well, very well maintained. It's like it's as if someone came here and gave it a paint job or something. <laughs> so I mean, I'm wondering why how did people used to get into the bunker? Before that, right? Uh-huh. When we, we stand here, right? Uh -huh. The door actually is just a normal entrance. Until a few years, right, the soil actually crumbled down uh -huh. and covered uh -huh. uh, half of the so I see, I see. Uh, I see. So now it's almost almost blocking. Yeah, it's almost looking at entrance. Actually, but before, uh, there was no staircase or anything like that leading down here? Uh, no, there's no staircase. It's actually a normal soil. So, Adrian, yeah. there's more down there. Yeah, we're going uh, down under the Oh my goodness, all right. I thought this was just just a, a wall. There's more down there. Yeah. Do you got torchlight? Because it's very pitch dark, no? Uh, okay. I think uh. I do. Uh, yes, yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> all right, let's go. That. Right. Uh, lead the way. All right, you're going to lead the way. Let's oh go. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, slippery, slippery. Like this. <laughs> if you slip, I'm not going any further. Oh, okay. Wow, what kind of friend are you? <laughs> so, all this, this this mud and water is just coming, forming from, from yeah. this rain, just yes. slipping through the entrances and all these uh, little holes and all that in the walls. So, there's obviously these, these pipes here, which have been here. Yeah. For decades. Yeah, for decades, uh, yes. So these pipes are used to transport o oil, is that correct? Okay, if you see behind, right, you uh -huh. can see a small hole of light, right? Right. Okay, you see the position of the pipe, right? Uh -huh. Okay, she's leading to the waterfront. Remember I said to you, before that, it's a neighbor dock? Right. Yeah, so it's actually lead to, lead to the neighbor dock itself. Oh, so the, sh the, the Navy ship, which is actually docked there, uh -huh. they will transfer all the oil, channel all the oil to the pipe, all the way in there. Right. Yeah. So, the, you remember the position there is actually Shell Station. I see. Yes. Right. So, it looks like this goes in another like 200 meters. Yes. You know, we've walked in about maybe 50. This goes in another by 200 meters or so. And every every 10 meters, there's there's a couple of these pipes. Yeah. So, kind of servicing the yeah. the the. the Shell uh, yeah. station over that side. Uh -huh. sure, sure. I see literally a light at the end of the tunnel. Is that is that the exit? When you go to the back, to the end, right? Uh -huh. There's another two uh, two big rooms. Ah. Uh, but the Gosh. thing is, is sealed off. So you wouldn't advise us to go any any further, right? Uh, try not to. But okay. Your no, own risk. Good advice. Yeah, good advice. Risk, actually. Good advice. Yep. Should we should we should we get out? <clears throat> Careful, yeah. careful, mm. careful, ah. careful. Mm. Mm. Ah. Mm. <sighs> oh. Okay. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Oh my goodness me. Okay, Adrian, how is it? <sighs> like I have to say, I loved it. 
It was nothing like I was imagining. Uh, and it's a lot bigger than I, I actually thought it was going to be. But it, actually, it, it, it's amazing that something like this still exists right here in Singapore. Then Harry has a surprise for me. Another forgotten bunker had recently been discovered. If I was interested in exploring it, I would need permission from the National Heritage Board. So I contacted the National Heritage Board who arranged a meeting with Dr. John Kwok near Senoko Fishery Port. Dr. John Kwok was formerly an assistant director at the National Heritage Board. He helmed the research team that delved into the Atap Valley Bunker's heritage and archaeology. Okay, so, um, Dr. John. Yes. Now, why, <laughs> why, why is this bunker called the Atap Valley Bunker? When <laughs> I let the team to do the research in this site, uh -huh. we had to call it something, we just uh -huh. can't call it the bunker. It used to be when we had to come to this bunker, we used the Atap Valley Road, which is on the other side. And okay. Atap Valley Road is most likely named after the hill next to it, which is called Atap Hill. So we decided just to call it oh, Atap Valley Bunker, and somehow the name stuck. Oh, so you're, you're, you're partly responsible yeah, for in a way. In it, a way. Right. Well, what, what, is there an official name yes, right now? Yes, um, this original name of this bunker was Magazine Number no. 4. Uh -huh. because it was part of seven other bunkers that were in this area. So there were seven of them originally. Oh. And this is magazine number four. It was uh, used to store explosive or ammunition for the warships that docked at the naval base. Right. So only magazine number four still exists. That's right. What's happened to the rest of them? So after the war, the British returned and they used this site as a armament depot uh -huh. until 1971 when the site was handed to the Singapore government. Right. And subsequently, it was used as the Sambawang Ammo Depot in 1977 up to 2002. And after that, the entire site was all cleared except for magazine number four, which miraculously survived. Very interesting. How about let's go and have a look? Very good idea. Yeah. Right. Okay. Oh, See okay. That, that's a nice, uh, looks like a guard post over there. Oh, yes, yes. And there's pipes uh, that lead in. This is the air ventilation shaft, actually. Uh huh. So when it was working, it feeds the bunker with oxygen. And these are some of the stuff that was in, installed much later. It looks remarkably well uh, painted. Oh, yeah. To say the walls. Well, 18 years isn't a long time, so there you go. Interestingly, this looks like oh, it's a curved, it's a curved wall. Is yes, it? yes, it's curved deliberately because see the bunker was used to store high explosive munitions and stuff like that. Uh huh. In case if there's any explosion, uh huh. This curved uh, feature will limit the blast that will travel out there. Can okay, you see this? Uh huh. This is the remains of some firefighting equipment here. Oh, the pipe draws water into this system. Uh -huh. Important if you're storing highly explosive stuff inside. Uh, I would think so. Yep. Yes. Right. Okay. So we're nearly there. If you look up ahead. And so, uh, right. here we go. Whoa! <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Echo, echo. Dr. John, Dr. John, Dr. John. <laughs> yes? <laughs> oh, Dr. John, this, is, this place is enormous. I mean, look at the ceiling. It's about five meters up over there. Uh -huh. And this entire space is about 300 square meters. Wow. And if you look at up there, there's even room for two gantry cranes, one there. And you can see one on this side over here. Uh -huh. They are rated to carry one and a half tons. An amazing thing about this, if you look up there, you see what is welded on the crane. It says 1937. So it's a long time ago. Uh -huh. So all these, all these are part of the original structure, obviously. That's right, that's right. It was originally installed. Someone tested it in 1973. <laughs> so, you know, they don't make things no, they don't that make last things this long last like that anymore. anymore. Yeah. So this was used to store, um, as a storage space to store munitions or explosive. And you can see the ceiling, it's, 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 uh, it's all made of metal. Yeah. Uh, welded together and riveted together. Why? Because if there's any explosion or a bomb that falls on top of us, the ceiling will just bend and whoever's inside here will be safe. 
Ah, uh, right. So it's it's made in these uh, individual yes, like a rib. strips. Yeah. So the, right, right, rib right. Structure. Yeah. So if it's concrete, it'll be all yeah, falling over us uh -huh. and it'll be done. But inside here, you're pretty safe from any bomb uh, that, that that will drop on over us. And are there any any plans to do anything with it? I don't think there's any plans for this. Best to keep it the way it is so that we can appreciate you know, what took place here. And this is essentially part of Singapore's history. Uh -huh. mm. And speaking of history, you want to check out something interesting over there? What in the world is this? This uh -huh. is actually for ventilation. Had it been working, we will be responsible for the air intake into this space. So this, this structure has been, been here from way back as well? Oh, yes. So you can see up here, as high as it goes, but it goes all the way down and it travels underground, underground all the way and linking up with the ventilation shaft over there that, that goes out to the entrance uh -huh. of the bunker. Yeah. Have a look at the end over there. You see the metal grill over there? Uh -huh. That's pretty much where all the air goes in and out. And all right, you can see all the way through. Yeah, you can the see other all side. the way through to the other side, and uh -huh. it will be the same for the one up there as well. Right. Yeah. So this is what provides this place with air for us to breathe. <laughs> Tell you, Doctor John, <laughs> it, it really is quite awe-inspiring to first of all have to trudge through that jungle. Oh yes. And then enter into this concrete space that has been here for decades and decades and has so much history to it. It really is, it really is quite something. Yeah. Having said that, air conditioning is a good idea as well, isn't it? That's a good idea. Let's, let's, uh, let's head out. Find some air conditioning. So, the uh, Atap Valley Bunker is the last one remaining of its kind out of a total of seven that used to dot this area of uh, Talbot Hill. And it really is a rare privilege to be one of the few people who've had a chance to explore it. So what I've learned from this episode is that there are quite a number of these underground bunkers dotted all around Singapore. And there probably still are a few left to be discovered. And it only takes a little bit of time and effort. And you could be the next one to discover the next hidden historical site. See you on the next episode of History Mysteries.